Ableton Live 12.2 is here and it's completely reworked one of my favorite audio effects in Ableton Live, the auto filter. Now, the beloved auto filter was so simple and easy to use. It's probably most people's favorite and most used audio effect in Ableton Live. So it's pretty bold for Ableton to go in and completely rework it. So will this new update improve it or have Ableton just ruined a classic audio effect. In this video today, I'll go over all the new and old features of Ableton Live 12.2's auto filter. Let's jump in and have a look at it. So kind of looks similar. Main thing is they've moved the two most important dials to the front where they belong. That's good. As I turn this, this will affect the frequency of the filter cutoff. Now, as you can see here by this main display, this is what you call a low pass filter. So everything to the left hand side will remain. Everything to the right hand side will be cut off. And it, this is the slope at which it will be cut off at. Now here we have the different filter types. So we have our classic low pass, which is the default. Then we have a high pass, which looks like this. It does the opposite, cuts all the lows out. That's the highest pass through. We have a band pass, which is essentially like the mid notch, notches a bit out and then morph. So these were all the classic filter types we had on the previous auto filter. Now, Live has introduced some new ones here, such as DJ, comb, resample, notch, and low pass filter, and vowel. So let me first show you the low and high pass and how they sound, then we'll have a look at a few of these newer ones. So let's put on the low pass, and let me play it to you without. And then I'm gonna bring it in. Go to high pass. Nice. Okay, you saw that I can control it with this dial here or this little dot here, I can click and drag it across. Sounding pretty clean, sounds pretty fat. Now let's have a look at DJ mode. The filter frequency changes into something called control. So depending where I am, if I'm minus 100%, it acts as a low pass filter, cutting out the highs. From the opposite, you see it morphs between like a low pass and a high pass. Let's hear how that sounds. Yeah, that's solid. That's a fun one. Let's have a look at comb. Whoa, I'm just going to set it up. You get some like phaser flangery sort of sounds to that. That's really cool. That's like more of a sound design tool, which is really nice. Now let's have a look at resampling. Whoa. Okay, it sounds a bit like the audio effect redux. It sounds like it's affecting the sample rate of the audio, giving that crunchy bit crush daft punk sort of sound. That's that's pretty nice. Notch and low pass filter. Let's hear this. Oh, I like this. That's pretty cool for when you're doing, well, kind of low pass filtering. Sometimes if you have your standard low pass here, you hear it can get a little bit muddy. So if we have this notch, you hear that just feels a little bit cleaner. Nice. And then vowel. Okay, so this is going to give like a human kind of sort of sound to your your instrument, okay? Hey, nice. And we got formant here which will kind of move the EQ boosts around to give you a bit more of a, a kind of vocal sound. And then morph. Oh, nice. Okay, wicked. Let's go back to our standard low pass. Now, as well as having different filter types, we have different cut off slopes. So 12 is going to be a bit more of a slower cutoff. 24 is a bit more steeper. You just get a bit more of a thinner sound with 12 and a bit more of a juicier sound with 24. So let's stick with 24. The resonance is the point at which it gets cut off, gets boosted up. You also see this sometimes on filters get called the Q point, and that gives this sort of sound. 
put up higher. Okay, so I'm gonna bring that down. Now, this is where this filter comes alive. We have this thing here, which is the LFO phase or spin section. So this is where it kind of basically puts the sides out of sync. So you get a bit of movement to the filter around the stereo image. So if I bring this LFO in and put it to phase down about here, just if you've got headphones, I recommend this section, listen to headphones, you'll hear it bounce around the uh, stereo image. So I'm gonna introduce this LFO. Put the phase up. Whoa. So this dial here will adjust the phase. So that kind of puts the individual sides out of sync and that's what will increase the perceived stereo image. And what's great about this new auto filter, notice in the user interface, this little section here shows you the LFO working, moving backwards and forwards. So the blue one is one side and the yellow one is the other side. Check that out. Now we didn't get that visual feedback with the old auto filter. So that's a really nice improvement, that one there. Then we have the, the rate here. So how fast that LFO is moving. Nice. And then we can go here and we can quantify that rate. So we could have it timed so it can be in seconds synced. So we can sync it to a rhythmic value. So like, let's put it to a 16th note. And then this morphs the LFO. We have the LFO wave. So we've got all the ones we had before, but we now have some go ramped up, ramped down, wander and sample and hold. So let's have a look at ramped up. Oh, let's turn the value down a little bit. Nice, so it ramps up, then ramp down. Let's bring the filter. over one bar. Nice, okay, let's have a lesson to wonder. Okay, that's just going all over the place. And the sample hold is like a random sort of stepped value. So if I put the sync rate up or the, yeah. So if I put the rate up with this, it will have more of a dramatic move around. And it essentially is, it's a random LFO. So it's doing stepped random values. So this here, when you put it a 16th note, comes alive and you can adjust the phase offset of the LFO, which essentially just makes the left and right channels start at different times. Nice. Okay, so then we have this section here, which is the LFO quantize sections. This defines the quantization mode for the LFO. As default, it's set to none, but you can quantize it in steps and you can choose the amount of steps that you have it in. So, can you see, it's a, you can hear clearly hear the steps there. You can increase the amount of steps or you can decrease it to get quite a choppy sound. We also have a sample and hold quantization, so that's going to do a similar sort of thing as the sample and hold down here and do a random quantization step. If then drive, this was only available on certain filter types in the previous auto filter. Now we have it there all the time. Fantastic, let's have a listen to it. Whoa. Without the drive. Oh, it really fattens that sound up. Put this back to rate. Put the LFO down a bit. Whoa, okay. Without it. Really fattens that. Bring that in. Bring up that drive a little bit. Okay, let's try some of these different filter types. So SVF is a clean state variable filter. The DFM filter internally feeds back for more of its distortion for a broad range of tones. From subtle filter sweeps to warm, 
The MS2 is a Sandy key circuit with soft clipping, and a PRD is a ladder filter with resonant limiting, without resonant limiting. Awesome, what does that mean? Okay, so DFM, let's drive it up. Whoa. I'm gonna turn this clip on here. Whoa. MS2. Wow, really cool. So we have a soft clip on here as well. So that's going to clip any spikes. We have a DB. So how loud this is going to be, the filter. And then we have a, a dry wet as well. So this is the overall output. We can also dial back the output game. Cool. So obviously we've got dry wet. We've got the new user interface improvements to some of the audio effects in Ableton Live 12.2. For example, here, if we right click, we get some more options. That wasn't that obvious in the previous versions of Ableton Live. So they've added three little dots on the end. It gives us that. So if we go high quality mode, it's going to sound high quality. And we've got mono sidechain as well. Now we have our sidechain section here which is going to affect this envelope section here. So now I'm going to put this filter on the drum so I can demonstrate this envelope. So now I'm going to just do envelope. If I didn't have the filter on, it's this. If I didn't have any envelope, static. I'm going to turn down the LFO for this the envelope in, bring up the resonance in the drive. Essentially what's happening there is every time there is a transient spike or a spike in amplitude, it is affecting the filter. How much it's affecting the filter is controlled by this envelope dial. So as soon as there's a spike, it would essentially like open up the filter a little bit. Does that make sense? So essentially the, the volume is doing that to the cutoff frequency. So depending on what rhythm you send in depends on how it acts with the frequency here. Now that is being triggered by the incoming audio signal on the track. What we can do is we can have that controlled externally. So that's where, if I turn this off, we go back to the bass, jumping around a bit, and we can get the kick drum to trigger this filter. So if I go external, I'm gonna go to group, and then I'm going to gain up this side chain. Turn down the LFO, and then bring up the envelope. And bring down the side chain gain. Now with the envelope, we can do negative values. So I can open up the filter. And almost get like a side chain sound to it. Really cool, hey? Now, the other thing is we have this side chain filter, and that is essentially filtering out a certain amount of EQ going through the filter. So here we have a low cut, and I can filter out anything below 200. Try a high cut. Shit, even fully high, it's not giving any high frequencies. Now, if I bring that back in. There. So I can essentially like EQ from within the auto filter, which is really cool. Okay, so that's the auto filter. Wow. What a cool update that, that is fantastic. Now, if you would like to learn Ableton in a bit more detail, see all the magical and wonderful things it can do, I have a free tutorial up here you can check out. Also, I have another video here where I unpack all the other features of Ableton Live 12.2. Thank you, Ableton, for a very nice update. Okay, bye for now, see you in the next one.